with a lot of new people joining the FTK product family lately, I thought it would be a good idea to cover just a basic walkthrough of how FTK creates a case. And this will work whether you have recently purchased FTK or are using our new 30 day trial to see what's up. This will help you out in just getting started. So what I've done is I've booted up FTK. It says enterprise here, don't worry about that. It's your shortcut will say whatever, this process will be the same no matter what version of FTK you have. So once you boot it up and logged in, you'll be uh, faced with the database management or case management screen. You'll have your list of cases here. If this is the first time booting, you won't have any cases here, of course. So we're gonna go up to case and new, simple as that. You wanna give it a name. It doesn't matter what the name is, most of the time it'll be your case name. In this case, we'll just call it building a case. Sure, whatever. Reference is up to you, don't have to put anything. Description is up to you, don't have to put anything. And then you can also load up a description file. You don't need to, but this could be um, a warrant. This could be uh, the request for work, whatever you want it. It's just wh whatever you want. So you can attach something there. The case folder directory. This will not be auto-filled initially. So you'll have to choose where you want your cases to reside. The way that I typically did it when I was running cases is I would have a dedicated drive to hold all my cases. And if we show you my case directory here, I do not have that just due to hardware limitations for what I have. You'll notice that I have this cases directory and within this are all the cases that I'm running. The case directory just holds what I call case meta files. So as FTK parses different artifacts within the case, it'll store types of files in this to display that information to you within the software. Also contains logs and other things. Anyway, not really whatever, but you can have one case directory and have all your cases loaded into it. That's what I have here. And so every time I boot FTK from this time forward until I change this, this will auto load in here so I don't have to update that every time. And then a new directory is made within the cases directory based on the name. Simple as that so that you don't have to update this and pick a new directory every time. You can if you want, you don't have to. Next, we wanna pick a processing profile. We have some ones that are built here, pre-built for easy buttons, however, the only one I would recommend using is field mode, and that's what turns everything off and just gets you straight into the case. No processing, no nothing. You can do it piecemeal after that. The reason why is I think it's important for an examiner, at least on the initial setup, to know what they're processing for various things. So FTK has a lot of different stuff you can process. We're not going to go over all the features. Most of them are going to be self-explanatory as you read them but you can toggle things on and off as you go through your case. I might toggle these off because I don't really care about MD5 and SHA-1 hashing every single file in my case, you know, until I need it. Now, maybe I want to do duplicates. Notice it'll automatically reactivate any dependencies for that. The next one I'm going to touch on out of three that we'll talk about is the file signature analysis. Notice that that is grayed out, and that's because I have various dependencies activated. Once I turn off all the other things, I could deselect it. I recommend that if you're going to run any processing options, it doesn't matter whether it's an enforced dependency or not, leave on file signature analysis. This basically is the processing option that detects what a file is. Just leave that one on. It is on by default. So you don't have to really mess with it, but you can go through and configure things. The last thing that we will talk about in the evidence processing for this video is expansion options. Expansion options is rapidly evolving with every release, but this is where you can find various application specific parsing, such as you know Android APK or Chrome or Edge with your browsers, Outlook for PSTs or OSTs, uh, Mac Mail, SQLite databases, all this sort of stuff will be in here and you can decide what you want to process or not. Now, once you've come through and configured it for maybe the type of case you're doing or maybe a company policy or standard, go ahead and save that user profile as something. So notice like this one here is called index only. That's because I've basically turned off everything except for file signature analysis and search text, search text index. 
This one here, system summary, is the same idea. I've turned off everything but file signature analysis and generate system summary. So you can get that granular. And the reason why you want to pre-build these and save them is one, you don't want to come through and do this every time. And two, if you have FTK Connect, which is our automation engine, which you should get and you can get on the website, especially if you're law enforcement, you can purchase the FTK for law enforcement bundle straight from the website. If you're corporate, you can work with your sales rep and get that in. You can automatically, based on watch folder directory and other criteria, have processing profiles ran against the case. So you don't have to do any of what I'm talking about ever again. So once you've saved a user profile, clicked OK, whatever, you'll be brought back to this screen. Let's say we did do index only. That's what we created. You can select your customized profile from here and we'll go ahead and click OK. In FTK standalone or base FTK, when you open up a case, the manage evidence window will automatically open. If you have FTK enterprise, the manage evidence window will not automatically open it. And that's because you may want to add stuff from an agent and that's not from this screen. Different video, different time. But when this opens, we wanna add, you can add your evidence type, images, directories, physical drives, etc. Click okay. <laughs> We want to add these two images here, you know, whatever. I can highlight both and click open. It's going to drop both in. The status means with the little plus, we're going to add. We can say, hey, this is a Windows image and, you know, cool time zone. I'm in uh, American Los Angeles. And we go ahead and we click OK. Once it finished processing, you'll see the evidence up here in this, and then you can either view it in the core view, which is what we're looking at now, which is kind of the back end, or go ahead and hit the smart view to open up the FTK smart view, which is new as of FTK 8.0. And that's how you create a case in FTK. So now that you have FTK and you know how to create a case, you're ready to go and you're ready to start analyzing your data.